So I'm going to talk a little bit about my gun sight loadout video. And unfortunately, I have like a photo I took prior to loading everything um, into a bag to take on the plane. So a little bit of this video is going to be you seeing me here and a little bit of it's going to be uh, me talking over an image of that loadout. So at the very top, I have uh, my honey badger uh, with a blue force gear sling and um, I believe a, a Streamlight HLX weapon light. Uh, mount on the left hand side of the gun um, and I have a, a full not a full Nelson a thunder chicken uh, suppressor um, since taking that video <clears throat> I've swapped out a handful of those things so the suppressor is now a full Nelson direct thread I don't have a muscle device um, I have replaced the metal blue force gear AK loop sling piece with uh, this Kevlar uh, 550 cord. I'm still using the Blue Force Gear sling, but I have added one of their um, elastic sleeves for uh, sling retention. And then the gun has an SBR and a proof stamp. I just haven't moved the stock over yet. Um, I have replaced the light uh, from that Streamlight HLX to this Cloud Defensive Owl, um, partially because Clear Anno matches. It's beautiful, and partially because I kind of fell in love with the Owl. It was one of the pieces of equipment I saw at that class that I was like, man, that is a well-made light. Um, and then, uh, so that is the gun. Then, uh, if we move a little bit further down in the photo, um, I have a, um, I have some oil, uh, a cleaning brush, um, some tools, some spare batteries for the lights. I recommend all those things. I have a rangefinder, which I didn't end up using all that much. Um, I did realize that that Bushnell hundred dollar rangefinder I had um, couldn't actually range targets far enough for um, when it mattered to me. Like I couldn't range targets in the three and four hundred range, um, and so that's what I needed to know that they were, you know, significantly further off than you know my kind of my zero distance. Um, and so uh, I've since replaced that and bought a new uh, rangefinder. I brought a bunch of the um, 20 and 30 round Lancer 300 blackout mags. Um, I like them because they visually all have that tan base plate, so they look different from my other mags. Um, and I still use them to this day. Um, and then I have uh, a, a G code uh, single paddle mag pouch. Um, I recommend like a kind of a war belt kind of setup. It was, you know, they're, they're more comfortable, but those G code paddle mag pouches are what we use when we hunt and when we just need to carry a spare rifle mag and they're really handy. Um, and then I brought a, a Glock a 19 an equivalent, some electronic hearing protection and some revision um, shooting eyewear. Um, so that was kind of like the course loadout. I did all of that inside of a, a Coltac uh, made by Q or sold by Q um, a shooting mat bag so that the gun could go in the bag, could go in a Pelican case, and I really like that setup. Um, I will say that one of the things I've changed since that photo is I've added these visual 300 blackout supers so I can denote my mags as supers and subs. And you will also note that I have reflective tape. Um, and that is so if I drop a mag or do a reload after when I'm chasing pigs, I can come back with a white light and it will glint and tell me where my mags are so I do not lose my expensive magazines. The last thing I've done is I have these, uh, I have a green painter's tape and I write what ammo is in the gun so I can keep my mags all loaded and I can know if they're supers or subs or specifically if they're this particular ammo or that particular ammo. Um, especially if or blackout, it can be difficult to tell from the bullet shape itself whether or not it's a super or a sub. So... Uh, that is my loadout video and a couple of things have changed since then. I hope that was helpful.